Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome to our live chat session here on Facebook, on the Women Girls Facebook. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, come, 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 bring your dinner, bring your coffee, bring your tea, whatever it is, and join in, in the conversation through our comment section, okay? Um, so tonight is very special. Uh, it is the International Women's Day 2021. So woo! happy Women's Day to all the women out there. Uh, I hope you're celebrating in some way, uh, whether sleeping in early, having a bar of chocolate, spending time with your family, whatever it is, I hope that you take some time to pat yourself on the back, like, hey, it's great to be a woman, you know? Okay, so this year's theme is, <clears throat> excuse me, is hashtag choose to challenge. So um, I'd like to know what all of you are choosing to challenge. Just sh share in the Facebook. Uh, perhaps when we have time, we can read it all. And this is great to share with other women who are also watching, right? Okay, so as you can see in the title uh, behind me here, we are going to be talking about how far the Malaysian women have come. Okay, and uh, as a Malaysian woman, you know there are plenty of intersections. You know, the race, the religion, the culture, uh, the food, the background, the history, everything comes into play. Uh, in being a woman, you know, you're stuck in the complexities and the uh, contradictions of, you know, chasing after your career, but also being a, an awesome stay-at-home mom. So these are things that we are going to unpack with our special women tonight, okay? So before I get into who our special guests are for the night, I just want to give a shout out to Learn in Pal, Learn in Pal, okay? So, um... Learning Pal is Malaysia's first social e-learning platform. Uh, it is to empower learners and also mentors to provide the best remote learning experience. Uh, and it's also giving access um, to everybody uh, to digital learning. So um, I had a look at it and honestly, it seems like YouTube, but with the content creators um, advocating education, educational content, they are teachers, they are coaches, and things like that. And if you do have that expertise, you might want to check it out. So thank you so much, Learning Pal, for powering our live session tonight with our two guests. Okay, I'll get into more what Learning Pal is, but you can also Google it uh, on the site while listening to our chat, and I'll get into it um, afterwards. But I'd like to introduce um, the moderator for tonight who will lead our discussion Okay, because she's a smart woman, okay? Her name is Lao Nga Yuan. I'm pretty sure all of you know her already. Come on, if you don't know her, come on, where have you been, okay? She is a Malaysian film director, amazing producer. She was also an actress. I don't know if you're still acting. And I know her through this TV show called Tiga R. Okay, it's not 3R, eh? it's Tiga R, right, Yuan? <laughs> oh, I'm just... And she's so... Huh? Yeah, no, 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 can also, I, I, I guess. Can, can. Okay. Yeah, I can. can. Yeah, we don't discriminate, however you want to choose to say it, okay? And she's also a women's rights activist. Uh, she is the founding president of Women Girls. Um, she's also the executive director of Global Entrepreneurship Movement Association and also the president of Kaki Seni, which is an arts NGO. So check her profile out. She has amazing, amazing experience. So welcome, Yuan. Thank you, Isa. I just thought it was really strange that you're introducing me as a guest, but well, I'll take anything that comes. Okay, okay. I'm happy to be a guest too. Moder she's the moderator, okay? Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll quietly like <laughs> walk out. Okay, um, and then we also have Lydia Tay. Lydia Tay is like, Nasi lemak, chakwe tiao, roti canai, teh tari, all that, okay? She's born and raised in Klang and she's so proud of K-Town. Even though Yuan is scared of Klang, she'll tell you why later. <laughs> um, and it's a strange story. Paranormal, okay? Paranormal type. Paranormal. And, um, you know, she's an amazing author uh, and that's why we have her tonight. Um, she's going to be unpacking about her book, uh, which is set closely in Malaysia and uh, UN will help us guide 
through this conversation, okay? So I leave it to you both. Yuan, take it yes, away. Yes, please do come back when there are questions from um, Facebook. Um, I think it's very important to first say that there are giveaways for tonight. So we, well, it's a first come first serve basis. So there is a specific promo code that we will send to you and then you will get a um, leisure reading package um, for one full month um, to enjoy all kinds of books that's available um, via the Learning Pal uh, platform by MPH. So this is something, this is how I rediscovered Lydia Te actually. Uh, when I was young, I was going to say little, but okay, young now. <laughs> when I was young, <laughs> I was reading quite a lot of work by Lydia in the newspaper because, you know, um, uh, uh, I, I didn't come from a very well-to-do family. So um, reading material means uh, old newspapers or used newspapers. So whatever you get to read, you read. You, you just like, you, you just take in every single word and everything, the font size, everything you take in, you know, that, that was how we, it, we used to be. We sat on wherever we can sit lah, just to read, you know, uh, um, as much as we possibly can because books are not cheap. It's quite expensive. Uh, in fact, I feel like my, the way my parents put it is a lot more expensive than how we view books today. Um, so that's how I met, met Lydia. And many, 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 many years later, when I was on Learning Pal and uh, Zime from MPH was uh, running me through it, and I was like, whoa, I'm seeing Lydia Te. Wow, <laughs> I clicked on her straight away and I was reading it. Um, and of course, Hong, if you're a Malaysian, uh, if you're Malaysian, uh, one of her best-selling books, uh, it's been sitting for like uh, number one bestseller forever. Um, and uh, I think in 2017, you yes. wrote as a book. No, it, called... it was it was two thousand and seven. Yeah, but then ten years later, you did a book that says how I wrote ten books. Oh yes, that's right, that's right. <laughs> right. And I don't know many people who wrote ten books. So you you're like, whoa, <laughs> ten books, amazing, amazing. I mean, we were uh, for Kakizuni, we produced uh, a children's book just to uh -huh. increase access to uh, the arts, the traditional arts, to remind them, you know, uh, using really interesting. Um, uh, storytelling way to re-engage the young people mm -hmm. and that was like I don't know uh, 30 over pages and we took a year to finish <laughs> you know so I don't know how you do 10 books that's crazy that's like oh magic. I didn't know you read my uh, newspaper articles yes I do uh, back when you were younger yeah yeah, uh, yeah actually that was how I actually started because um when I was a teenager I used to read Adiba Amin's articles as I was passing in the New Straits Times uh, that's how I, you know, uh, I read, uh, but I, I used to read a lot of books. Uh, that's why I, I, I enjoy Adiba Amin's uh, articles. And uh, I also uh, wrote articles which is similar, you know, to that kind of uh, articles that she wrote. Yeah. So do you think there's a different way, a different writer will write differently? How, how, how do you, I always think, I always feel like my writing is never good enough. Never. And then I get really shy and really like second guess my work all the time. I will really never, I've never really shown anybody my work. It's only because of work that you have no choice. And thank goodness it's just script. So nobody's really going to look at your essayness of the script. Therefore, I burani show people. But I, I don't know how writers do it. You, you must have a lot of courage and I don't know, like a lot of confidence in... in uh, maybe I should go back a bit uh, on memory lane. But before I do that, I would like to say hi to all the viewers. Just now I didn't have a chance to do that. Thanks to you guys for having me for this interview. All right. Okay, let me tell a bit of a grandmother story. Okay, uh, I, I like I grandmothers. To, yeah, yeah, if you, you don't mind. I, I used to uh, really read a lot uh, in school and... Uh, uh, I was very good in uh, essay writing. So my, my teachers used to uh, read out my essays, you know, in, in front of uh, all of the various classes. Um, so I've always harbored this uh, latent uh, uh, desire to write. But I, I worked as a secretary after I finished uh, uh, my uh, schooling and uh, uh, form six, right? So, and uh, like you, uh, Yuan, you said that you, you, you don't know whether your writing is good enough. I also had that kind of fear that, you know, that back then I knew that my writing definitely was not good enough. I didn't have the know-how. But naturally, people who read a lot tend to write a bit better. But I feel that I still need to, you know, learn a bit of uh, technical expertise 
So I signed up for this correspondence course, writing correspondence course, uh, back in those days, 1990, 1996, I think. I paid about $1,000 for it. Uh, I have to pay up front. Wow. Uh, it's cheaper. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was it was it was cheaper if you pay up front. So uh, I paid for it, and my intention was to finish it in one year. All right. That time I had just quit my job as a secretary. I had I had two young children, each one and two. So I thought, okay, now this is the time. I I got to do it. I got to I got to prove to myself that I can do it. So I did the course, but instead of finishing up one year, I had my third baby. Halfway throughout. <laughs> So that through a spanner in the works and uh, you know morning sickness, giving birth to the child. So I ended up doing it in five years because we, we there was no time frame for it. All right. So I, I ended up doing it uh, in five years. And in 2001, that was actually a year of milestone for me. 2001, I finished my writing correspondence course. It was 20 lessons. I finished it all. And uh, I gave birth to my fourth baby. And... I published my first book. My first book was published in that year, 2001. Yeah. So that was, but even now, I, I, I still feel that sometimes what I write is, uh, is uh, not good. Not good. So I think that kind of, uh, you know, uh, what do you call? Uh, Again, guessing, doubts. Internal, in, internal editor is telling, oh, your writing is horrible. You're not good enough. You know, people, uh, I think it's something that everybody struggles with. But then when you get validation from your readers saying, oh, okay, they enjoyed reading your articles or, or something you wrote, uh, connect with them, then you, you feel very uh, good. You feel satisfied that you, know, you are able to make that connection uh, with the readers. Yeah. So how, how do you tell yourself, uh, how do you tell the editor in your head to shut up? Uh, sometimes uh, there is no choice because deadlines loom. Um, my, my style of writing, how I manage to write 10 books, a lot of it is, I'm sure you have heard of this uh, Malay proverb, uh, uh, sedikit demi sedikit, lama lama menjadi Jadi bukit. bukit. Ah, so I, I, I've read my articles, right? So I will publish articles, I will send articles to uh, newspapers, all right? Then they will publish them, and then I will compile these uh, articles into a book when I have enough of them. And then uh, I was a columnist actually for a, a few publication uh, at one time. So when when you are a, a, a columnist, when the time comes, you, you really have no choice. You know, uh, you got to burn the midnight oil and uh, get your get your articles right down so that you can email to your editor. All right. So sometimes that is uh, the only way to do it. So giving I yourself deadline. Yeah, and also forcing yourself with external motivators. You have no choice but to just do it, right? Yeah, yes. I, I totally understand that. Yeah. So, you know how your writing is always about how you observe and how you've been, um, maybe sometimes it's how you've lived. Uh, it's your way of life, in your viewpoint and your experience, for example. Um, do you think when you write them, you consciously take into consideration um, the gender aspect of things? No. That has actually not... Uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I don't write with this uh, uh, thing at the back of my head that, okay, am I writing to women or am I writing to men or, you know, a, a younger audience? I, I, I don't. Um, especially uh, back in those days, the 2000, uh, in 2004, when my, uh, you know, Lives Like That uh, was published. That book is actually quite personal in the sense that most of the articles in that book uh, are based on my, my life. That time I was raising, you know, uh, four children and four, four young children provide you a lot of, I'm sure you know, Yuan, you also have four kids. Yes. They provide you a lot of raw material, a lot of grease for the meal, so to speak. So, I mean, when I write, I just write, okay, what the kids, some funny things that the kids say, or, you know, what, what, what happened in school, or, you know, uh, uh, my, my dealings uh, uh, with the children, or driving on the road. So, I don't really have this, like, uh, perception at the back of my mind, okay, all right, I'm, I'm writing for female. But for one of my uh, last columns that I wrote, uh, it was in The Sun, uh, 
I ended the column in 2018 that was called um, A Family Tea Time. That one, yes, I wrote uh, with the family uh, in mind. So mostly it is to women, all right? Because most of the time it is women who will be reading uh, my articles. But of course, there are also uh, men who read uh, the articles. So when women read your articles, do you, or, or when you're writing, knowing that women are the ones who are reading your article, do you, you know, take certain different kind of uh, care about how you want to want them to feel when they read your article? No, nope. just write lah. Just do it lah. Just write lah. <laughs> so what kind of feedback do they usually give you? Uh, that um, makes you feel like you're on the right track. That you don't question. Um, maybe you should, you know, sound a lot more empowering, perhaps, or um, uh, how, how, how do you do that? Okay. Um, I mean, throughout the years, I've had very uh, positive feedback. Malaysians generally are very nice. They will give you very nice feedback. But if they have nothing nice to, to say to you, they don't, they don't send you uh, angry emails or whatever, uh, which is fine by me because I don't like to receive uh, terrible email. I can tell you that there was this particular fella who wrote me a very, very scathing and nasty email. I I couldn't took it. I, I couldn't take it because it was yeah, somehow and and he's and uh, this 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 person, I don't know whether it's he or she, sent it uh I think uh during Chinese New Year, one of the Chinese New Year. I mean I was writing my article, you know, my article sometimes is tongue in cheek. All right. You know yeah, what I yeah. wrote? I wrote about, you know, Chinese New Year, you know, firecrackers going, bim, bim, bam, bam, you know, what do you do when you have babies sleeping? Right, so I right. wrote, okay, because I did some Googling. I said, oh, you know, take a used diaper. Okay. Fill it, fill it with something and then light it and then throw it into the neighbor's compound. <gasps> to shut Lydia! Them up. Ah, no, la, I mean, I mean. Did you to, do I that mean, or it was just an imaginary no, thing? No, it's, 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 people don't do that. In fact, okay. that was not even my idea. You know, you know, some people they were like, uh, uh, you know, they, they will uh, make so much noise. Um, so it was, it was, I'm just pulling a leg up, uh, pulling somebody's leg. Of course, I won't advocate really. Absolutely, throwing. absolutely, right, right. I right. mean, when you read that, you know that I don't mean it. Right, but right, right. But he sent me such a nasty email that oh, he's really spoiled my Chinese New Year, and I. I emailed my editor the time he was on holiday in Singapore. I said, he said, I ignore them. Lah. Don't, don't care about them. But, but generally, people are very, very nice. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I think you must, be, I mean, you must be the very few people that I've met uh, who is a public figure and who writes in a public sphere. And the kind of, the kind of feedback or reviews that they are getting has been very good. Because today, you know, if you look at the social oh. media, could just click oh, on yes. anything, anything with a huge amount of comments and you will realize that the kind of comments that are coming back aren't exactly most of the time aren't very nice. Yeah, I think yeah, I think if now, if I were to be, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, you know, writing uh, regularly and having my, I, my uh, writing posted on social media, I think I will get the kind of uh, unpleasant comments. No doubt about that. Because, I mean, let's face it, you are not going to please everybody. Not everybody that reads your work are going to agree with you and like what you read. There are going to be those keyboard warriors who don't read things properly and they make nasty comments. So I'm glad in a sense that, all right, I'm, you know, not that actively writing and, you know, uh, attracting such uh, people, you know, on my writing. I will probably have to, uh, you know, close my eye, close one ear, cover my ears and don't listen to these uh, bad comments. I mean, because, I mean, you may tell a writer, say, oh, just ignore them. But the truth is, it really hurts. It really hurts. Yeah. So I, I guess, mean, I also yeah. guess to a certain degree, you will learn how to deal with this hurt also, yes. just like right. how most of the young writers are dealing with it. Yeah. yeah. I, I notice most people, most writers, uh, I mean, I, I throw through a lot of uh, people's uh, uh, Facebook pages and uh, things like that. A lot of writers, let's say they post their writing on their blog or on their uh, Facebook page. If they meet all these nasty uh, comments, they will just ignore them. 
I think that is the best way because if you engage in them, there is no end to it. Because that person does not see eye to eye with you. No matter what you say and how you put forward your argument, they're not going to agree with you. And I think uh, sometimes we just have to agree to disagree, right? You have your point of view. I have my point of view. You don't like it. That's fine. Yep. Well, we're all still learning about how uh, <laughs> to work around this or to work with it or to make us feel uh, not so terrible when we are attacked. I think uh, it's difficult not to feel anything when you're under attack. But maybe the, the rule here is not read it. Maybe that's that yeah, should be. correct. Don't maybe that it, should be I mean, the rule. Yeah, but but I mean, a lot of people are watching. Uh, if, if those people who are watching, be nice. Be nice to you know people on Facebook because you may make some nasty comments. But have you thought of if you are in the person's shoe, how how would you feel? How would you react? One day, you know, you may get back the same type of treatment. Right? Sometimes you've got to walk about in people's shoes. You've got nothing to say. Nice to say. Don't say it then. Right? You That's know the how. How in a lot of your work, you also depend or um, you do, um, um, you know, you do write a bit about some of the stereotypes that you're looking at. And then you mm -hmm. do have comebacks on stereotypes, right? So mm -hmm. what do you personally think about stereotypes? Um, what do I think about stereotypes? Um, I think stereotypes are true to a certain extent. Um, I don't know whether it's my age or what. My, my children sometimes will think that, ah, why are you stereotyping people? But sometimes stereotypes happen for a reason. But I, I think that um, um, stereotypes can be flawed in the sense that, uh, okay, you, 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 may, you may have uh, uh, talk about uh, uh, certain stereotypes, but not everybody fits into that mold. That is what is the generally accepted uh, a perceived idea of what a certain person is like. I, I wrote about, for instance, uh, uh, Malaysians being generous. You know, whenever you have like appeals for uh, 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 donation, uh, right, right. for sake, or underprivileged children, you will see Malaysians, you know, they will just rally their support and they will donate. All right. But this, that doesn't mean that every Malaysian is so generous. But that is the stereotypical Malaysian. Uh, uh, psyche for you that we are generous when the the uh, the call has been made to donate to a, a worthy cause. So I'm just going to read like a little bit of uh, what you wrote in the US suspenders. Um, and you said, <laughs> if you're not lazy, you're not Malay. If you don't cheat, you're not Chinese. If you don't drink, you're not Indian. To my friends, I say, I'm Chinese, but I'm no cheat. My friend's Indian, but he's no drunk. Another is Malay, but he's no slob. Chinese, Indian, Malay, or line line or others. We are who we are to, we are who we make ourselves to be. Not the stereotypes we're out to be, but if we don't buck the trend, we'll forever be stamped. I really like that very much. Oh, okay. That's actually from Hong Kong, we are Malaysian. Ah, really? Uh, yeah, ah. that's from Hong Kong and Malaysia. All right. Okay. US suspenders is more on a uh, use of uh, uh, English. English. All right. right, right. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I, 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 looking back all these years, uh, that, you know, that poem actually resonated with a lot of people. Mm. Looking back, I'm surprised that I, I wrote this. Yeah, but I, I think that you cannot, you actually cannot, cannot say that. I have Indian friends, but they don't drink. Right, they don't drink at all, and uh, mm. I don't gamble. I don't gamble, and uh, like like I said in the poem, stereotypes are there, but you you don't have to you know to behave as a as a stereotypical uh person. What did I say about the Chinese again? Sorry, <laughs> uh, the the Chinese way. If you don't cheat, oh yes. I'm very, very honest. I can tell you that. I am very honest. From young, I have held uh, this uh, motto, honesty is the best policy, All right? So um, don't think that because uh, I'm Chinese, uh, I'm, I'm going to cheat you, all right? So what do you think? Uh, so you've never stereotyped women, like gender, you don't, you, you don't stereotype. You, you've never written about um, uh, stereotyping gender? Um, 
not not as such i think i mean it's been a long time um the one that i can uh, think of now uh right was also in hong kong if you are malaysian i think about uh uh about about women about uh this uh, uh women uh losing weight uh spg or the i i i can't remember <laughs> Wow. Yes, that, SPG is like it is like a, one of the the issues. Wow, well, one of the most talked about um, back you know in those days. Yes, I remember. But but I didn't talk of SPG in the terms of that word. But uh, okay, I I I, I remember now. Uh, I think it was about uh, I was talking about a uh, a woman uh, you know uh, losing weight. You know you, you they they will show the before and the after picture of before you go for the slimming treatment and. And uh, after this uh, sleeping treatment, what you look like and all that, yeah, I I talk about something like that. But really, but but really, my writing, I don't really uh, remember talking a lot about uh, stereotypes. Yeah, is it because you you yourself didn't think you were stereotyped in any way, or uh, that's just not your style, or that's because mm. really you never thought about you know that you were. Um, not getting anything because you are, you are a woman or you're getting more because you are a woman hmm. no yep amazing i oh, no, i think it's great i i really think that's really authentic um and also it's a different kind of conversation that we're having on international women's day um i think i have been in what the this tonight will be the fifth conversation that i've been having since uh, about um all the various issues on women and we hear continuously and nonstop about how uh, 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 we need to uh, drive, you know, uh, more gender equality and equity, um, and uh, we need to allow more opportunities for women. But from your stories, it just seemed like, you know, you are you're the kind of uh, uh, person that is all about. Well, you want something, you go on, get them don't have to be stuck under any you know thoughts or whichever you know if you don't like something then you just don't read it or don't send the email to me like, but like very clear about <laughs> exactly you know. yeah exactly yes yes correct correct what you want i mean sometimes we talk in terms of gender equality that's why when you email me the questions about all this empowerment of women i was like oh my why am i going to talk about this you know I mean, okay, you talk about how many percent of women in politics, how many percent of women in top management. I mean, face it, lah. Majority of us are we going to be in politics? Are we going to be in top management? We are mostly what average James, average Jones, your average Mina, average Ame, average Davy. I mean, what is this gender equality to us? But as as it is now, I mean, I compare our times now with my mom's time. My mother, um, she didn't have a, a proper education. She, I think she went to maybe primary standard one or standard two. Then after that, she has to stop. Why? She's the eldest. She's take care of her brothers. So how she learned, she taught herself to read and write. She looked at her brother's uh, school books. And that's how she learned to write. So women back in those days, we don't have that uh, you know, much access to education as now. All right. So my my mother my grandmother herself was illiterate. I mean, she came from China, and right. uh, my mother taught herself to read by looking at the brothers' books. Okay. Mm. So I mean, in terms of if you say how far have Malaysian women come today, you compare with our 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 mother's generation. I think we have come a long way. All right. People in those days, yes, my 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 mom worked. My grandmother worked. They worked in the shoe factory, and my mother she. Uh, later on, she she became a tailor. So she she so close uh, from home. She took care of us. There were six of us. She uh, did babysitting for the neighbors' children. All right. So she did all that. They had no education. But today, I was educated. I mean, I didn't go to university. But okay, I I I did a lot of courses. You know, I I enjoy doing courses. Uh, uh, learning. And my children have education. All of them. You know. All of them have gone to university. The youngest one uh, is, is in the first year of university. So the access of education to like average Joes and average James, I think that this is something just very fantastic. 
Of course, we're going to do more for those people in the rural areas, those who are really, very really poor. Then, you know, maybe they don't have the kind of, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, opportunities yet. But for the middle income and lower middle income, I mean, look, look how far we've come, right? What so, an interesting I, conversation point of view. I, I, yeah, okay. I mean, I, I appreciate it. Uh, especially after a full day or a couple of days on on how much we need to do, perhaps sometimes the simplest thing is just you know do it in your own sphere and maybe not so macro the conversation um, you know that we we need to be driving. Uh, I I know earlier we made uh, you know we laughed about how the three of us are from different decades. Um, Isa being the youngest in her 30s, I'm in my 40s, and uh, Lydia is slightly older only than me. <laughs> and, um, and obviously, you know, our, our, our experience and our relationship to the external world or how we think our opportunities are, um, uh, is, it, you know, it, is really, um, it happened or it didn't happen because um, of what we can help or sometimes certain things that we cannot help. Um, uh, but I guess at the end of it, it still depends on how you want to push things forward. Mm. Yeah, right. This um, is a mulling moment for me. Like, hmm, okay. <laughs> how do we make it better for our, our next generation? Lydia, do you think about that? Um, I've actually not given uh, a... Have you Much wanted your children to read your books? <laughs> have, you, have you asked them to read your books? My children refuse to read my books. All right? oh. Because they know they're going to read about themselves. And they say, uh, what my, my, my son used to say is, uh, write, embarrassing, write embarrassing stories about us. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they well, don't like to read my yeah. books and uh, they, they, they don't want their friends to find out that their mom is an author. And there was this funny story that uh, my son was in, in, in school at the time, in secondary school, and uh, they had uh, a, an exam where, you know, um, there was an excerpt of an essay written and actually my article appeared <laughs> in his exam paper. Right. Oh, how <laughs> yeah. about that? Is oh, it on purpose? Right. Did the teachers know? Yeah, no, no, the teacher didn't know. The teacher didn't know. So he was like, oh, well, this is my mother's. But, but he won't tell his friends. Okay. And then there was this time my, my daughter, the time was in secondary school. She, they went to the library and uh, the library had a copy of Lives Like That. Okay. And, you know, in my, in my, uh, in my book, in that particular book, I think I, I talk about uh, toilet training, one of my, my youngest girl, all right? <laughs> and the friend took up the book and flipped through the chapters. Toilet training number four. Uh, I won't say her name here because she will feel <laughs> embarrassed. And the chapter that she picked up was toilet training her. So she felt pretty embarrassed and uh, she, she, she didn't want to. <laughs> they were rather their friends would know. I think your kids are around my age because I think I think I have seen an excerpt of your like in your book or something in one of my exam papers. Like seriously. Oh, really? Yeah, I think we were oh. the same age, like me and your kids. That's oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, my eldest son is now uh 32 this year. Hey, 32. Uh, no, 31, sorry. My eldest son is 31 this year. Yeah. Right. So I mean, it's it's it's, it's um I mean I've, I've got four kids, two uh two uh Gen Ys, okay, and uh, two are Gen Zs, and uh and uh we we are, we are we are we are very different uh uh from each from from uh they view us as uh from a different generation. I'm from the boomer generation, okay. All right. So like I was telling my 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 daughter the other day, I was just you know. Uh, having fun and experimenting with TikTok. So I told my daughter, hey, you know, I'm on TikTok already, go and check it out. Yeah, huh? you're on TikTok? Why are you doing the, the, the Gen Z people stuff? You are a boomer. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Huh? How do you feel about that? How, How do, do you feel about? about, you know, being, you know, being, 
not discarded, being sidelined from all these fun things that the Gen Z get to do. And, you know, as you're older, then if you do TikTok, people will look at you and say, you should be embarrassed doing that. How do you feel about I, that? I don't care if I want to do it, then, you know. I mean, it's yeah. fun. Uh, I see, I mean, I, I see this Korean uh, Korean uh, grandparents, you know, doing dance moves because they want to connect with their grandchildren. I mean, I mean, there is no, I mean, you cannot own something like it's your generation. Okay, TikTok is it only for the millennials. I mean, why can't boomers jump into it if you want to do it? I mean, I was just having fun, experimenting with it. But after that, I just stopped after a few because, you know, uh, uh, because of time constraint also, I haven't really thought about, you know, what, what, what I'm going to do. But uh, yeah, I mean, like what you said earlier, or well, women or not, I mean, whether you are a woman or you're a man, what do you want to do? You just go ahead and go ahead and do it. Right? Oh, like go. I want to write. I have no qualification. I just need to learn to write. Go and do it. I'm learning Korean now because you know during the MCO, uh, i I'm I'm a drama, I'm a K drama addict. All right. <laughs> so I got so interested because I know a bit of Chinese and having and knowing a bit of Chinese makes uh, uh, learning the Korean language. Easier. So easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean Absolutely. with uh with internet access, I go and sign up for an online course and yeah, I'm I'm on my way to learning Korean. So when you watch a Korean drama, do you think the women that is being portrayed there are a lot more empowered? Um no. Actually, there's this show that I've been meaning to watch, I think born in 1982. I was just uh, uh googling it the other day. Um it's about uh it's, I think it's quite a heavy movie, but I, I haven't watched it yet. I wish I watched it before, you know, uh, you guys told me that, you know. But I, I, I read the synopsis. It's about, it's about how a woman, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, typecast la, in, mm. in, their, in the mm. Korean, it's a very patriarchal uh, society. I mean, mm. having watched so many uh, uh, Korean dramas, I think, uh, I mean, if you want to talk in terms of gender, I think we are better off than the Koreans, okay? Than the South Koreans, I think so too. Uh, based on based on what what I've seen uh in uh, uh uh Korean dramas, you know, mothers are supposed to you know be like this, behave like that, bring up the children. Yeah, uh, that's not to say that we do things differently. I mean, in Malaysia too. I mean, women we are the main uh caregiver in the family. Even though, like you know, the women, uh, the mothers may be working, but they do the lion's share. I mean, face it, lah, it's the truth. They do the lion's share of the housework. All right, they do the lion's share of the child, child, uh, caring, despite having a full time job as well. All right, so women are still primarily the the caregiver, caregiver. Mm -hmm. yeah. the nurturer and the caregiver. Yeah, the nurturer. And uh, um, running a cam uh, uh this uh, Cambridge, I mean, uh, my my English center, I can see that uh. The, the what do you call the roles are still there. You see, the, the, the people who come in to inquire at my center, usually most of them are women. It's the mother. The mother will come and check what is the price, what is the what is the fee, what is the timetable, what are your courses, what, what is the syllabus used. And then at the end of the day, before signing, let me discuss with my husband. He has to pay the fees. Right? So um, yeah, so women is still doing all uh, uh still doing all these uh, supportive uh, and, and also main I would say the main main uh, you know uh, uh, child 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 raising but of course nowadays uh, dads are very much in the picture compared A very to hands on yeah, yeah, yes yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's one thing uh, uh, dads nowadays they have come a long way in that they are very hands on. Uh, with uh, you know parenting, not like uh, my father's time. My father was hardly home. He just go out and early in the morning. He come back uh, late at night. All right. Yeah. So uh, that's it. Iza, do you have questions you want to ask yes. Lydia? Yes. Go ahead. So we've actually got gotten some questions here on Facebook. Uh, there's one. So just now you did mention uh, we are still talking about stereotypes. Um. So um, there was a question, due to your unbridled view of stereotypes, um, so when you write in your books, do you write about stereotypes to debunk the myth of stereotypes or to prove it? 
to debunk or to prove it. Yeah, the stereotype. Mm. Well, I don't think she did either, you know. I didn't think Lydia, yeah. after listening to her, I think she just write yeah. what she wants. It, yeah. She doesn't it's care. Things, right? I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm, see, I'm not trying to prove any point. I'm not trying to prove a point. It's different if I sit down and say, okay, I'm going to debunk this myth or I'm going to uh, prove this. But I've, I've never returned with this, uh, with this mindset on. All right? I... I mean, I just write like this of you know my experiences and my my observation. Yeah. Don't you think like Isa like, that is true freedom? Don't you think yeah. that? The the fact that really Lydia really didn't care. She's I mean, I don't like, know lah. It's not it's not that I really don't care. I care if I get. I mean, you don't think emails. about stuff like that. I mean, I. I mean, if if people would send me missives and uh, nasty emails, I don't think so. I can. I'll probably be. Pick, you know, hiding in my room for I don't know how many no, days. But yeah, when you were writing but, when you were writing, you just like this is what I see with my own eyes, and I'm not putting any perception to it. I'm just like in a way reporting as it is, right? Based on your yes, own. yes. I mean, I mean, my writing in the lives like that uh, is mainly just my experiences and uh and uh, observation. I mean, we we oh dear, I. <laughs> I really don't know how to say it <laughs> because, uh, yeah. Or if I have, if I had given, uh, you know, uh, if I had more time to prepare, then you know, I could have gone back and see. Oh, what did I write? Yeah. Okay. What are those videos gonna ask me? Yeah, about this and about that. Then I'll be more prepared. <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah. someone's interested about your writing and how you get the inspiration. Um, so you observe a lot. Um, to write. So, do you have a specific place um, that you find inspiration? Just now you did mention uh, like your kids at home, I suppose. So, do you actively view things like, okay, I'm, I'm going to look for inspiration now? Or like if something happens, they're like, hey, that's interesting. That should be written about. And then you just like jot it down in a notebook. How, how is the process for you? Okay. Um, okay, that's a question I can handle since it's on writing. <laughs> Don't ask me about stereotypes. I'm not, I'm not this deep intellectual kind of writer. Okay. No, but it's refreshing for us to have this conversation. You don't get from our point of view where we're activists. And that's what we talked about the whole day. And I at know. night, it's like, oh, you, why you care so much? Just do what you want to do with no baggage. That's amazing. But no, tell us. Tell us how do you write. Okay, all right. If there are stories about the... Yeah, sometimes uh, it is things that happen, all right? It's things that happen about, uh, you know, like, like for instance, once I wrote about, uh, I, I wrote about cooking a uh, frog porridge uh, for my, for my uh, family. And, you know, so it, it was not because I was thinking, okay, I'm, I'm going to write uh, something about cooking frog porridge. No, it just happened. I happened to go to the market. I happened to see the frogs. So I bought it because I remember my mom used to cook frog porridge. So, you know, I wrote about that. I wrote about how, you know, after I cooked the porridge and, and I didn't tell the family what it was. So I just let them eat. You know, they thought that it's just ordinary, I don't know, chicken porridge or something. Yeah, no. So after they have eaten, then I told them, you know, case, you know what you have eaten? You have just eaten frogs. So, yeah! <laughs> you. <laughs> you know, because if I have told them before that, they wouldn't, they, they wouldn't have eaten it. All right. Yeah. So it is just things that happen. It's just things that happen to me, and when you have young kids, you know, uh, a lot of things uh, happen during the day that can make a uh, quite uh, interesting reading. But of course, later when I wrote Cow Sense, uh, that was actually a compilation of my uh, newspaper articles. Uh, in 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 the Sun, uh, I wrote the family tea time for five years. Yeah, so sometimes it is a challenge thinking what can I write about. You know, after at the end of uh, uh four or five years. No, sometimes you, you, you talk about uh, uh, a, a different uh, like slow eaters, you know, uh, eating habits or, or taking the kids out shopping. You know, you, you can write a, a different spin on it, a, a different angle. But sometimes you, uh, you, you run out of ideas. Then I may look through uh, other publications like uh, uh, other websites or go through newspaper, you know, to, to see uh, what, is the what, what are the current happenings. Or uh, sometimes, you know, things 
just happened. You just got to keep keep your eyes open. Like there was one day I was driving along the NKVE, and then uh, I, I I saw a billboard on uh, on, uh, on 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 something, and then suddenly this thing just popped into my mind about piggyback. All right, piggyback. Um, you know we we give our children piggyback. All right. So I said, hey, I must write about piggybacking because you no, know, I watch a lot of Korean dramas. You know, Korean Koreans, they always piggyback the 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 drunk girlfriend. You know, piggyback them. Uh, 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 and and this there's something uh interesting I found now. Um, during Korean weddings, the mom no the the sons will give their mom a piggyback on their wedding day. Right? Why? It is. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, it's part of the culture. Yeah, I can't remember exactly why, but that was, I thought that was uh, a pretty interesting. So when I wrote uh, one of the articles, so I wrote about, hey, I want my son to piggyback me, uh, when we get married, give me a piggyback ride. But but I I, I cannot then wear chong san, you know, uh, because it's not, not convenient. I'm gonna wear something eggy. <laughs> How about yeah. that? Yeah, and sometimes, doing it. sometimes yeah, you have to actively go and look for inspiration. Like when I was writing Aponym, mm. Aponym is uh, actually uh, also started from the uh, a column in the in the Star. Uh, that time we had the uh, mind mind your language page. All right, so uh, I used to have a fortnightly column there. So sometimes I do uh, uh, run out of things to um to say. Now, aponym is specifically on use of English. So sometimes what I'll do is, I will, if I'm really, really out of ideas, I will open up, uh, take a dictionary, um, I ask my daughter, you just open to any page and you put your finger there. Okay. If they say the finger lands on uh, kitchen, uh, then I will use the kitchen as a springboard to write about other things. Then I will start about, you know, uh, something happening in the kitchen. And then from there, the story will come about. All right. So things that happen, looking around, but if you're actively looking for inspiration, you can get inspiration from so many things. Movies, what's happening on the road, what you read in the news, what you see in social media. Uh, a lot of times, mm. I go to, I, 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 I'm a stalker. My children always say I'm a Facebook stalker. I will go to this, uh, some Facebook page that I belong to and see what are the moms discussing. And some of the things are so interesting. Of course, I cannot use any of the names or even the, Things that I, I have, I will use some of the uh, what is being discussed as a topic, all right, topic for, for my column. You know what I think? I feel like uh, I feel like uh, Lydia is, you know, a woman of uh, like she's just all about doing action, she's yeah. action oriented. You see, in her sentences, it's all verb, 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 <laughs> like very action driven. It's never just like ideals or ideas or, you know, like, uh, yeah. So, so that's quite, quite interesting. That's really like uh, um, very different in the conversations that I've been having this couple of days. So well, I'm, I'm just an average, I'm just an average Jane. La, Yuan. Like I said, VOP, very ordinary person. I'm not VIP, I'm VOP. No, your ordinariness is so fun and I, I, you're nothing near ordinary, okay? I just want to remind everyone that if you were to, uh, right now, from uh, if we were to catch uh, um, you, uh, do a hashtag choose to challenge, um, choose to challenge anything actually and just put it into um, the Facebook page, we will give you the promo code so that you can have access to leisure reading package on uh, Learning Pal by MPH and you could find yourself a lot of books and Lydia Tay's book is um, definitely in that list so it's something that you want to be a part of so just hashtag choose to challenge you can choose to challenge anything um, and then we'll send you the code okay Isa okay so there's a follow-up question to that question um, <laughs> So do you then, because you mentioned a little bit about social media and also the way that you write is very like based on observation. You don't really think much about, oh, this is going to, you know, but you see, oh, that's interesting. You know, that, that's funny. Uh, or that's nostalgic. So you write. Um, so the follow up question is that, okay, do you see as content creation these days using social media is an extension or like a replacement of actually writing because there is a lesser amount of young writers these days. So what is your opinion on that? Um, 
You mean, uh, do I see uh, social media content as replacing traditional yeah. content? I mean, like uh, in uh, what is published in newspapers? Yes. Is that the question? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, I think definitely, definitely. Because um, in the traditional uh, uh, publishing uh, scene, like, you know, um, <clears throat> newspapers, for instance, um, one of the reasons why I... I, I quit from the, the newspaper was, I know the, the papers was having a tough time, all right? A lot of newspapers were, you know, doing, um, you know, laying off people, mm -hmm. all right? And I was also running out of things to say, but but nowadays, you know, compared to the time when I actually first started writing, you know, that was a platform for us. Uh, News Straits Times used to have this, my very first article which was published uh, as a result of my, my correspondence course was in News Straits Times. They had this column called, uh, I think, uh, Insight, Insight or something like that, where every Friday or uh, something like that, they will invite uh, readers to write in. And when they have this type of platform, it's actually uh, very good to, to encourage people, you know, like, like myself at the time, I was you know, starting out in writing, um, to send in um, their, their work. And also this, uh, some of the papers like... Uh, most papers actually would have a, a page where readers can send in their letters. But I'm not talking about letters. Because letters, you, when you write, it's normally about some uh, current issue which is happening or expressing your opinion uh, about some policy or whatever. I'm talking about sending in like uh, first-person articles about you know, something. Uh, the style actually was very good in, in that. Um, when I was actively writing, so uh, I had a lot of... Uh, I'm really thankful to the staff for giving the, me the platform to, to uh, write my articles. Of course, when, when you write in, there is, there is uh, no guarantee that the editor is going to like your article. All right? You may think, okay, this is uh, no go because it doesn't fit in. All right? But uh, most of the time, of course, uh, my articles uh, uh, will be accepted. You've got to think, okay, what, what do people want to write? But nowadays, you know, there's less opportunity and... With Facebook being so, uh, uh, you know, readily available, every, every Tom, Dick and Harry can just set up a page and start writing. Yes, I think um, I, I see uh, sometimes a lot of uh, pretty good writing on uh, on Facebook. All right, but but having said that, sometimes you know, you know, when you read uh, certain things, sometimes um, I I I tend to feel that okay, um, maybe being uh, now in the uh, you know English language business, I will pick up all the grammar errors and say, ah, because for me, that sort of, that, that interrupts the, the, the reading pleasure. Ah, this you is went. wrong grammar. That is, you know, yeah. So, in, I mean, not to say that I want to pick on people's uh, uh, English, all right, because some people just can't stand their English being, uh, you know, they, they, they think that we are so like, I am mighty. Why you always correct people's English? You think your grammar is so powerful, uh, so powerful, correct people's English. <laughs> Yeah, but this is a this is a very generational thing, though. I I, I remember um, being corrected all the time, all the time. Okay, like whenever I speak, you know how sometimes I feel like very frustrated because I want my language to get there faster, and then there isn't a way to do it. And then uh, suddenly the Tibo, when I was um, that should be from the year two thousand onwards. Okay, from year two thousand onwards, suddenly, suddenly I'm less corrected. And then suddenly I start hearing radio stations using mixed languages and all kinds of English coming out. And then suddenly it's acceptable that your English is not the perfect Queen's English, you know, proper. You were not scolded so much. You were, people were not so angry with you. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's such a big change because my whole life I'm so insecure about my language because the way I want to express myself is so different. You know, it's not just the only way to express yourself using the right language. I think you could. It's just so much faster to say, uh, let's do it with summer summer. Mm. Or together we do it. I know it's not right, but <laughs> <laughs> it's just so much more, you know, the cut with people, you know. Um, but uh, I think that's fine. I think that's fine. I think that's fine. This is the kind of... Uh, uh, and then the new political. generation of people, when, you know, they look at the text, look at the, the way they spell words, uh, look at the short forms of words, and I'm like, oh, oh, why, why you want to do that to the spelling? 
It's got a perfectly good spelling and you just spelled it. I don't even know what you're trying to say. Yeah, ini apa ni? Yeah. Yeah. Someone just said Chuba try. Like that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know, right? Chuba try. Yeah, yeah. Ah, Chuba try. Okay, Chuba yeah. try. Yeah. But is it, a, is it an issue? What do you guys think? Like, um, is this why people don't have the patience to write books like from end to end and they prefer to just like do something on Instagram, for example, that disappears in 24 hours or Twitter in 140 characters. What do you guys think? Um, I, th- I think, uh, you see, nowadays uh, people don't read. Despite the statistics saying that, you know, our, our reading uh, our rate has gone up, you know, people really don't know how many books per year. From what I can see, just, just the people who come into my center, you ask most of them, I tell you, 90% don't read. That's a fact. They don't read. And I keep encouraging them, hey, we got books here, you know. Yeah, we have a library. We got books here. Please borrow the books to read. It will help you to improve your language. But people just don't read. I think they don't have, um, I think they don't have the kind of patience anymore. Or maybe it's a, it's a generational thing. I don't know. I mean, back when I was growing up, I, 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 I read a lot. I read a lot. But nowadays, you know, people can get e-books. People read like short, uh, short texts on uh, social media. Like Instagram is, uh, I was just telling my daughter, hey, you know, I really hate reading uh, newspaper articles on Instagram. Then she said, why you go to Instagram? Instagram is for pictures. You want, you go to the website. Lah. Because I said, I follow the newspapers. So when you say, when you see something interesting, you know, it's such a hassle to go and, click on the link on the bio and look for this at the end I just I just give up all right yeah I, so, I read on Twitter very fast on Twitter oh. yeah for sure I know in 140 characters if you can't say it then you know it's not it's not it's nothing it's, not important. it's nothing yeah it's not going to be urgent for me to read so if it's urgent I should be able to read it within like what 30 seconds I get it yeah, mm. yeah. so but I hate clickbait I really cannot stand I cannot behind clickbait yes. It's like, you know, you thought it meant something. So you want to read some more, you click on it and it's completely not what it was supposed to be. And you get so (laughs) upset and then I will never trust them again. So I I think uh, um, the people who are into clickbait, they really need to rethink this strategy because if I don't trust you once, I'm not going to trust you again. Yeah. But I mean, I think nowadays clickbaity articles are uh, are not so, uh, not, I hardly see them nowadays. (gasps) at one time, it was like... Oh, yeah, yeah, it's true, it's true. I mean, at one time, really, it was everywhere. Yeah, it was terrible. Nowadays, I hardly see a lot of uh, clickbait articles. And sometimes, sometimes you know la, there's actually, uh, it's actually clickbait, All right? Yeah, absolutely. Do we have more questions? Uh, we more do. Questions? We actually do. Um, a lot of... Uh, someone commented, nowadays, people don't want to watch a half an hour cooking show. So they watch the, like... Tasty. Yeah, the Instagram one. Yeah. Fast, fast. You know, like 30 seconds. I get it. I get how you do it. Because you understand really what cooking, right? No need to tell me yeah. everything. La. Switch on fire also. Uh, tell me, man. No need. La. I get it, right? So yeah, yeah fast, fast. But- I think that's a very, uh, yeah, that's a very uh, uh, perceptive comment. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Even for me now, if I look at cooking videos, I will please don't tell grandmother's story. I want the video straight away, yeah. Don't tell me uh, how to do this. Uh, I jump, I will fast forward, you know, straight away to tell, uh, to, to look at it. Like I was, I was cooking crabs the other day. All right. So I, I, I look up a video, how to wash crabs. Uh. So there's a blur of taking a pila, a blue crab, la, this crab, la, that crab. La. Never mind. Just fast forward to how we clean it. And that's the other thing I want to mention about, you know, how far, like you're talking about generational uh, changes and all that. Back, back in those days when my mom was still alive, like frogs, for instance, I, I remember I called my mom, hey, mom, how to cook the frog? Huh? How to wash the frog? Huh? Okay. And now my mom is no longer with me. Instead, I will ask Google. Same thing with my daughters. My daughter is now in Melbourne. Uh, she's living there. So if she wants to, to, to cook something that she doesn't know, all she has to do is just Google. She doesn't have to call me and ask how to cook this or how to cook that unless it's a special recipe of my own that she wanted that is different. Uh, you know, everything... Have Google can do. Mm. Yeah, have Google can do anything like like doing doing uh IT stuff. Sometimes I, I I need to like learn things like when we first started doing online classes, Zoom, how to do this, how to host Zoom, how to do this, do that. 
Google. Everything is Google. So like my children, sometimes I will ask them, hey, how to do this and how to do that. Then they say, why you don't know how to do this, man? I say, I know I can do it. I just play Google, then I will find. But it was a longer time for me to learn via Google. You just tell me how to do it or you do it for me, then it's faster. Not that I can't do it. I can do it. I can do it. I find out from Google, all right? <laughs> yeah, so now, now we, are, we are living in the instant, instant uh, generation. But sometimes I also fear that Google is replacing my job as a parent. Yeah. Um, yeah, so sometimes before I say certain things, I want to know what Google think I'm going to say. Uh, are there any other viewpoints? So I check in with Google first before I tell my kids. And then sometimes I really think maybe one day all they need to do is, you know, uh, what will mom say? And it will come up. No need to have a real mom there also. You just, what will mom say? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, more question, uh, Isa. Oh. Um, okay, so this question is, oh, by the way, before that, um, someone said, my mom asked what you have been up to, Lydia. She used to read oh. your columns. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm, running yeah. a, I'm, I'm, I'm running an English language centre now. I've been doing so for, I think, 11, 11 years. Yeah, that's why nowadays I'm hardly writing. Yeah. Okay, this question goes to both Yuan and Lydia from Aisha. Um, can you tell us about a role model who has inspired you over your career? Oh, my writing career? Uh, she just said career. So I suppose, oh. yeah, because you're an author. Mm. We just talked about how Lydia likes to drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. She's really thirsty. I talk too much. Really maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe you and can answer first while she's drinking. Um, I, I, I don't think I have just one. I have many. I, I, I continuously learn from different people um, and I learn very different things from very different people. They all inspire me very differently. Um, I... I I struggle to find a person simply because the kind of stuff that I'm doing is slightly a little bit more different. So you kind of need to trailblaze, right? You're starting something completely new. So there aren't enough examples for me, except for uh, women who serve as, you know, courage. Like you look at what they're doing and you realize that, well, you must have taken quite a fair bit of courage to start something that has never been done before. Uh, and, and then that gives you that much more okay, motivation, like, if they can do it, so can you, right? But to have a role model to sort of, like, uh, guide you through, uh, I, it's not so, it's, it's not so just direct like that lah for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Lydia? Okay, when you take part of uh, role models, as I mentioned just now, uh, uh, earlier with the, uh, before this uh, session, I used to read uh, Adiba Amin, Adiba Amin was a columnist in the New Straits Times uh, as I was passing. So uh, she, uh, her column was very, very popular during that time in the 1970s. And, you know, I, I will without fail you know, uh, uh, read, read her, her column. So I would think that, you know, I don't know, somehow that because you, you tend to, writers tend to uh, write something that they enjoy reading, like, you know, I really enjoy reading uh, stuff like that, uh, first person, personal pieces. So, um, yeah. And in fact, uh, she wrote the, 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 the forward for Hong, uh, if you are Malaysian. Yeah, so I, I would say, yeah, she's one of the role models for me. I mean, in terms of Malaysian women. The other one is, of course, uh, uh, Lee Su Kim. Um, you know, she's the professor at, I think, UKM. I think she still is. And she has several, uh, several books as well to her name. Um, uh, I really enjoyed that her book, uh, Malaysian Flavors and uh, a Manglish, right? So, um, and she's also written um, novels as well. So for me, so far my writing is all non-fiction. The closest to fiction would be my eponym series where I spin a story about this lady called Eponym. I've actually written a, a, a novel uh, which uh, has not seen the light of day. It was, it was terrible, but I managed to uh, use some of the chapters uh, uh, to publish in the, one of the newspapers that I was a columnist for. 
but I would eventually like to uh, write a novel. All right, whether it is uh, this novel that I, I worked on many, many years ago, or I may, I may, I may work on something uh, totally new. I don't know, nowadays, you know, there's so many platforms and they got Wattpad. Maybe, maybe I may try out that later in future when, I, when I'm not working uh, and I have more time. All right, yeah. But that is one of my ambition to, to write fiction. I'm, I'm not good at fiction, but I would really like to uh, give it a go. Okay, that's amazing. Okay, so another question. This time, it's the, ro the role is reversed. So just now, who were your role models? So now that you both are role models to uh, young women out there. So this question asks, um, what main change would you like to see uh, for young girls in the next generation? We spoke a lot about generational uh, stuff just now, right? So what do you both think? I mean, for me personally, of course, since we're in the space and we're working so hard um, um, to, to bring options to girls, to young girls, um, I really do wish that every child, not just girls, and, but also boys, to be able to find their own support group or support network for themselves to deal with all the issues and problems that we're not seeing, we're not yet seeing um, uh, that that's actually coming. And, and fast approaching. Uh, parenting today is so different from maybe say my mom's time, I think. Uh, she used to be able to tell me what her mom says or compare me with other people. And I would feel like, oh, I need to buck up and do well, right? But uh, today I can't use the same thing with my kids. And I, I can't even half comprehend the kind of stress or pressure that they are in. So the only thing that I really do wish for young people uh, today, both boys and girls, is to be able to find ways to sort of solve their problems and to have a different viewpoint on how to look at their problems or the issues that they are dealing with. Um, uh, because the, the older generation or the parents can only do so much. Um, the rest is really up to them. Um, they say that give your children the best principles and then, you know, the rest is really up to them. But this is coming so much faster than it has ever been during my time when I was growing up. I, I think the safe zone that I had with my parents was so much longer. Um, it was well before I was 20 plus, before I even, you know, start being afraid of things before that you're really in so much of a cocoon that your parents um, have for you you're, you're so safe but today the exposure that young people have on online i'm not there at all and the kind of things that they are dealing with we're not a part of that at all how do they even begin to tell us what they feel i i think that is something that we have not even begin to teach we're not even start going into schools to talk about um, so the best way to deal with it I really hope they will find good friends who would be able to just figure something out um, because this is a figure as you go along world right this is no longer a world you could really see how how it's going to go so you try your best and by trying your best I hope um, sincerely that they all have other people to lean on who could give them a different kind of comfort so that they themselves know what to do moving forward. Okay, I think that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, really, uh, that's really good, uh, Ariane. I think I will agree with you. Um, I was just talking about, to somebody about this, uh, you know, um, what you mentioned about the, the, the support and the network is actually very important because um, nowadays, uh, in this generation and coming gen generations, I think mental health is going to be a, a big problem. All right, people do not know uh, uh, how uh, how to uh, I don't know how to manage uh, themselves, and uh, maybe also partly is because of all this uh, social media. Like you know, uh, you 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 put out something on Facebook, uh, you got five likes, but this fellow put out something on Facebook, and uh, they got three hundred likes. Oh, you know. Uh, then they start comparing and uh, yeah. But actually what I want to say is, all right, what I hope for uh, future generations, actually sometimes I fear, I feel that uh, people in this generation are raising uh, a new generation of uh, self-centered uh, little emperors 
Uh, yeah, because sometimes I see that in my center, uh, uh, not to see all of them, I mean, sometimes you, you do see uh, some very uh, obvious cases where parents will give the children everything and let them make decisions, all right, in things that they are not ready to make. If your child is weak in English, you enroll him in an English course, whether it's at my center or any other center. All right, he needs to improve in English or mathematics or whatever. All right, you don't let the child make the decision. Want to come for English course or not? Nah, nah, nah. Why not? Nah? Why not? Nah? Hello, the kid is seven, the kid is eight, doesn't know how to make decision. All right, you let them make decisions. Wow, what, what they want to wear. Okay, you want a pink shirt or you want the red shirt. All right, or, 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 or what would you like for a, a, a a uh, tea today, you want a chicken sandwich or you want nuggets, but you don't let them make decisions like this, you know, and, and don't give them everything that they want. I, I sometimes feel uh, when I see uh, uh, parents like that, that, you know, you, you just give them uh, everything that they want. And the parents will realize their mistake when they grow older and their children when you see how the children will treat them uh, in future when, when they are grown. All right. So I think we have to be very careful. Um, uh, Yuan mentioned about uh, uh, Google, you know, uh, um, you know, going to find out from Google. I mean, I think Google is a fantastic resource. I love Google. I really like it. As a writer, you can do so much research on Google rather than, you know, back in the days when I first started, I have to go to the library, okay, to do my research. I go to go and visit the newspaper, uh, you know, go and check out their archives or whatever. So uh, sometimes we have to be uh, careful of what you read, whether it's on Google or, you know, uh, a books or, or whatever, self-help. All right. We have to use our own uh, discretion and judgment and not because somebody say it must be this, you got to die, die, follow this, you know, use your own wisdom, your own common sense, lah. like we say, cow sense, my book, cow sense for parents. Sometimes you just got to use your own cow sense, all right? Don't take everything, you know, you read as, you know, gospel truth and, uh, you know, yeah. And, okay, if you're not sure, you can always, like, talking about uh, a support, network of support, you have, you know, uh, it's, it's very important to have, uh, you know, friends or maybe uh, uh, some family members that whom you can uh, connect with and uh, share with, all right? Okay. So um, that's that's uh, that's the thing that actually I I I I worry uh I worry sometimes. So maybe I don't know when you and I uh you know maybe we have to be I don't know uh, role models for these people. No, no, not yet. <laughs> but uh, perhaps we have time for one more question from the floor. Okay, so I think this is quite a good question. Um, so the suicide rate amongst the younger generation has been increasing uh, vastly. I think it's it's also tying back to what we mentioned just now about you know mental, mental health, health. yeah, mm. and all that. Um, do you think that writing can help in or oh, as a catharsis? Do you think writing yes. can help as a catharsis? Yes. Definitely, definitely. Actually, writing can be very, uh, can be very, very therapeutic. therapeutic. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You know, sometimes if, if let's say I've had an argument with somebody and you like, you feel so, uh, you feel so mad, you know, you just, you know, you just pour out whatever that you're feeling, you know, it can be, it can be broken English or whatever. It, it doesn't matter. You just write whatever you're feeling. You can actually help you, uh, um, uh, help you release release yeah so writing you can use it as a as a form of uh release um i think it's important that people know how to uh uh what do you call um find a find a what do you call escape escape channel what 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 do you like to do all right what do you like to do? If if like stress is getting to you, whether it's a uh, uh, whether it's a uh, a uh, uh, school or college or whether it's work, you need to be able to find an outlet. What talk talk to people? Now in this respect about talking, I find women are 
Why do women live longer? Why? Because we talk a lot. Ah, we got problem. We can call our friend, nah, cry over their shoulder. Nah. Cry or not? Men, everything bottled up. So they die younger. Correct. Nah? <laughs> so you must find, I don't know, find people to talk with, people that you, uh, uh, who you are comfortable confiding in. All right. So friends or family members, do something. If you love to sing, uh, go to karaoke, you know, uh, inv or invite friends over. If you love to eat, you know, go out with friends uh, to the mama or whatever. You need to be able to um, find your own uh, release channel or like me, you know, I watch my K-dramas. All right. Or you can even learn something new. Like at my age, I'm learning Korean. What's the use of learning Korean? But why not? All right, why not? Maybe I might go to Korea and live there for a few months. Who knows, right? <laughs> Absolutely. For me, I think um, um, as long as you know that when you're writing, you don't have to feel pressured about good writing. It doesn't matter yes. because it's how you All feel right. and what you are thinking. So just do this year. Don't care about the grammar. Don't care about what you're... It, the most important thing is, is to let it flow. Once you've let it flow... I think it's also important to be able to read it again. Um, I think that's what a lot of people struggle with as well. Uh, writing is one, but reading it is another. Um, you could, you know, after a few days, come back and read it. But what's amazing is the first outlet is that you have that outlet yourself to be able to express yourself. And if it's not writing, sure, you could sing about it. Sure, you can act. Sure, you can just, I don't know, record into something. Uh, but that only you have access to because you learn about yourself by listening to yourself. And most of the time, we're not giving ourselves enough opportunity to do that. I think young people today, because, you know, they have a earphone in their ear all the time. It's like, you know, a new organ like that. So, <laughs> it's, and, and, you, and, and, and they keep bombarding their brain. So in my head, I'm like thinking, oh my God, I cannot imagine how your brain uh, is functioning. It just is so noisy, right? If they're not listening or watching a YouTube or something, they're listening to songs of all kinds. So when do their brain have an, have an opportunity to talk to itself or to really reflect on things or to really, hey, oh my goodness, this is what I think. Oh, I, I have an opinion about that and it sounds like this. That's interesting. So you, you need to have moments like that. And I think today, young people aren't giving themselves enough of those moments. The quiet moments for them is too deafening. Um, and, uh, and, and that's definitely for me a worry, but it's so much so that if it affects the way they view uh, themselves and bring danger to themselves, I think that's something that, you know, um, uh, we all have a responsibility to stop and do something about it. All right. Thank you for that question. Um, whoever you are, I hope that I hope that helps you, and I hope that you find what it is um, that can help you, like you answered, record um, how you feel or what you're thinking, the thoughts in your mind. Um, and for sure, I think writing is definitely it still is one of the best ways to manage how you feel, what you think. You can even just do point forms like bullet journal, and you know. If you don't want to take up too much time of your day, at least just kind of like release it. Um, but honestly, I, I never thought of Lydia's theory about uh, why women live longer. It's because like, we talk more. Um, no, it's not my theory. It's somebody else's theory. I just borrow it. <laughs> no, but also, like, also what tying back to what UN said, I think a lot of like people nowadays, we have like earphones plugged in our ears that we don't just don't talk. We don't talk at all to anybody. Um, let alone ourselves. So I think that's it that we have today from Facebook and also Instagram, the questions for you all. And these are great questions. And we have a giveaway, right, Yuan, for the questions. If you are mute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just repeat that. So basically, if you just do a hashtag choose to challenge whatever, I mean, don't just type whatever, choose to challenge <laughs> something, I mean, don't type something. How do you say this? Choose the challenge. Fill in the blank. Um, then we will send you a promo code that allows you an access for an entire month um, on LearningPal for a leisure reading package. So you will be able to read 
for what some 300 plus books that's available uh, that you could read for completely free for the whole month just to get a sense of what's available and also there are quite a number of um, there are quite a number of uh, uh, local writers Malaysian writers um, that I've really enjoyed growing up and that I'm still enjoying in the a lot of people are still writing, so that's amazing. Um, and we hope that Lydia can write more. Go, Lydia. Go, Lydia. Go, <laughs> Lydia. You, thank you. Yeah. Go, I'm Lydia. I'm going to stop writing my Korean dramas. <laughs> and if you do write, maybe if you write about me, I'll be very proud of you. I won't yeah. be like your kids. I'm going to say, whoa, Lydia writes about me. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Hey, I, I first I first saw you on the Tiga R three R. Okay, I've always been the uh, I've always been stricken by how natural you were in the hosting, and I think I've seen your acting too. Which shows did you act in? I remember watching you your movie. You know, or is it some dramas, Chinese shows? Yeah, well, no, I don't really do Chinese stuff power. because the people don't really ask me to do many. Uh, well, anyway, uh, yes, so I act here and there. <laughs> I yeah, I, I think I remember seeing some of your shows. Yeah, I was like, hey, she's so natural. Huh? What is she doing? She's doing so many things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trailblaze. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lydia, for this wonderful evening. It's given me a new insight, actually, um, on different kinds of conversation, which I think we should all try and strive to have as, with as many people as possible. Um, uh, thank you so much for becoming my role model. I, I really, I know I read yourself and I feel like, ah, I... You know, this is how you write well. So, you know, you you were that kind of guidance to me. Um, we'll talk again, I'm sure. Uh, okay, and thanks, thank you for Isa. having me. Thank you for having me. All right. Yeah. So uh, I hope I've not disappointed uh, the, the viewers um, who have come to watch. I right. uh, really know from all the questions, I, I feel like now we're, we should create like a book club or something because everyone's just pouring their hearts out on the comment section and someone just said that uh i think he Liu in the facebook comment section she just he or she just added um into the comment saying that last time uh he or she used to write scribble in a paper and burn it <laughs> oh hey hey you know what you know what i've done uh when i'm angry with somebody you you write you write on a piece of paper flush it down the toilet yeah really? i've done that before <laughs> But it's okay. paper though, you can't flush it. Ah, when it's stuck, it's you, Lydia. Now I know. <laughs> okay, if the toilet is it's stuck, you check paper, if Lydia okay? was there. <laughs> no, paper cannot. You know, like even like three ply or four ply uh, tissue papers now will get stuck. Really? Yeah. Then why do you use toilet paper then? <laughs> oh, yeah, actually, good question. Yeah. Unless it's, it's like meant to go down, it's meant to be flushed. No, still sometimes you use too much. You're too advantaged, you use too much. Then it's really difficult for water to flush down that huge, huge pile of uh, whatever, three pile, four pile. No, I, I, I just, you don't have to write so much, okay? Wait, I like how this conversation escalated quickly to like <laughs> stories, scenes from the Malaysian toilet. <laughs> You know, right? Hey, I tell you, if you allow us to talk some more, we can still talk one, okay? So you better stop us, Isa. I know. Stop us now. But honestly, um, thank you so much, guys. Um, Thanks, Lydia. Thank you so much. Happy, happy Women's Day. Yes. All right. Happy, happy Women's, Women's Day, Day to everyone. And also to those who are watching, also sharing all your memories, like burning pieces of paper la, and all this, and then reading Lydia's columns growing up. Thank you so much for leaving your comments. Um. Uh, either Facebook or so, uh, Instagram, someone on Instagram. So thank you so much. Uh, we will try to do more of this, right, Yuan? Yes, uh, absolutely. And have more people, have more conversation. Just more talk. different kinds of conversation. I think yeah. that's necessary. That yeah. we can understand each other better and, uh, you know, reduce whatever gap that there is, whether it's generational or thoughts or a different background, you know. We need to have this kind of open conversation so that we just understand and know different viewpoints. Yeah. Always again. Exactly, because okay. There are Thank you so much, women, women Thank girls. Bole, Yuan, Bole, some more Bole. Yes, Bole, Bole. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, thank you. Right, bye.